Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about Lean. Let's discuss the origin of Lean. So it was in the 1950s, post the Second World War, Japanese industry was going through a tough phase, and Toyota was no exception. After 13 years of production in 1950, Toyota had only produced around 2700 automobiles, and they were nearing bankruptcy. On the other hand, American automobile business was booming, with Ford producing roughly 7,000 automobiles per day. So you can see the difference, while Toyota in 13 years had produced 2,700 automobiles, Ford was producing 7,000 automobiles per day, such a large difference in their production. So in the same year, senior executives from Toyota visited Ford plant in the United States to understand their best practices. Back in those times, owning a car was a luxury. Prior to Ford, cars were mostly custom made for the very rich, produced by highly skilled engineers and designers. And each car was kind of a prototype. Ford introduced mass production with the help of two major changes. First was that they had standard parts which were interchangeable. So it's not that you only are manufacturing one machine, since they wanted to produce in bulk, they had to standardize the parts so that the parts can be interchanged. Second was the assembly line production. That is, rather than making the workers go to an underproduction car with parts, it was the car that moved on a conveyor from one unit to another for installation, so that there is no unnecessary movement. These are the two qualities that made Ford stand apart when it came to mass production. But Toyota's problems were different. Mass production required huge investments in terms of equipment, machinery, and technology, which was out of question for Toyota. The demand in domestic markets was more of variety, from trucks to luxury cars to multi-utility vehicles and more. Therefore, investments on mass production pattern would have further multiplied because you need a different assembly line for each product category. There was growing competition that established global players were willing to enter Japan. And even if the investments would have been made possible, sustenance was not guaranteed as the technology was rapidly changing. So if today you make a complete setup of mass production for a particular product, due to change in technology, you might have to completely dismantle it or reorganize it and Toyota was not in a condition to be able to take up that kind of risk. Now let's understand the difference between different production styles. Talking about a batch production, let's say we have a simple task of posting letters. So the first step here would be to get the paper. Then you will write or type your invitation on the paper. Then you will put that paper into the envelope. You'll put a stamp on the envelope and it is now ready for dispatch. Simple five steps. So we have different departments. There is a department that brings paper. There is a department that writes or types. There is a department that folds the paper, puts it in the envelope. There is a department that puts stamp and there's a department that finally dispatches it through the postal services. Everything was moving in batches and we'll explain in a while what it means. Let's have a look at one at a time production. So you bring one piece of paper, you pass it to the next person, he starts writing or typing the message. The third person starts putting it in an envelope. The fourth person puts a stamp and the fifth person makes it ready for dispatch. Let's closely analyze what are the differences between these production approaches, batch versus one at a time. So in a batch production system, the product moves in batches or lots. For example, only once 100 papers are counted is when you start writing the first letter. And only when 100 letters are written is when you start putting them inside the envelope. And so on. Which means only once 100 letters are put inside the envelope is when you start stamping them. And only once all 100 letters are stamped is when you start dispatching them. As against this, a one at a time process involves continuous flow at all times. For example, 
If the first paper is passed to write the message, once the message is written, it is passed to the next person for putting it in the envelope. But after passing the first paper, the person there would have taken the second paper in hand. And as soon as the person who had finished writing the first letter would have given it for putting it in the envelope, the person here would have got a task to write another letter. So that gap which you had in the earlier case of batch production, wherein one task is completed and only then the other task begins, is no longer applicable in a one at a time process. So you can imagine the first letter to be posted would be ready much sooner in case of a one at a time approach versus a batch production. We took an example of 100 here, it could be more or less. So a one at a time approach always speeds up production compared to a batch production. Another very important point here is that while you are doing a one at a time production, you will be easily able to catch defects and with your feedback, you can bring corrections. So for example, if the person folding the letters is not folding the letter properly, in case of a one at a time approach, you'll figure out in the first or the second attempt itself. Whereas in case of a batch or a bulk approach, you will get to know about the first set of defects only when all the hundred letters are there with you to dispatch. So you will not be able to correct it that fast as you can do in case of one at a time approach. And this is the reason against the batch production and mass production Toyota chose to go with one at a time production. Also, Toyota's entire production system revolves around creating value for its customers. And what is a value? Well, it has three characteristics. One, it transforms the product or service. It is done right the first time. And the third and the most important one is that the customer is willing to pay for it. For a step or a process to be called value add, it needs to satisfy all three characteristics. If it doesn't satisfy even one of these three characteristics, it could be a potential waste. And we'll just talk about it in a while. If in a production flow, a process step is not adding value and is still necessary due to regulatory or compliance requirements, we still keep it. But everything else apart from the three characteristics mentioned above and this one exception that we discussed just now is termed as waste. So what Toyota identified is that in order to create value for our customers, we must eliminate waste. And this was the mantra that Toyota gave. We gave all this background just to help you understand the definition that we're going to discuss now. So lean is a systematic approach towards waste elimination, which lets an enterprise focus on creating processes that only support value addition for its clients. Now that we know the definition of value and waste, it's easier to understand this definition. And that's where we had to cover those concepts. So this covers part one of our introduction to lean. In our subsequent video, we're going to talk about the eight types of waste and what differentiates Toyota's production system compared to the other production systems. Hope you liked this video. And if you did, please don't forget to subscribe and share it with your friends too. Thank you.